Hi, this is a follow-up to Paul McPorter's homework on his uh, Raspberry Pi lessons that I did where I created a speed of sound lab that um, probably won't ever do this, but it could be used in a classroom setting. And I was thinking, well, it'd be good if we didn't have to, if the students didn't have to open up Python and then click on, find the file that we needed and then uh, click on it to run it. Um, and uh, I decided to try to figure out how, how you could do this without opening up Python on the Raspberry Pi. And um, I had several false starts and several avenues that I stopped thinking about. One of them was that I guess on Windows, I seemed like an easy solution. I guess on Windows, which is not Raspberry Pi, that there's an option to put in a W after the PY, so it's dot PYW. And supposedly, if you're on a Windows program, that'll run the, you can like go to your file manager and click it. And if your, if your preferences are okay and everything, you should be able to bring that up and uh, it should come up without opening a uh, editor or anything to uh, do your, uh, get started on it. It should bring it up just by itself. And uh, of course, I'm not on Windows, so I couldn't go down that avenue. So I had to look elsewhere. Um, I also found an option where you can create a, a totally executable file that you don't even need Python on your machine. This would be like if you wanted to, you created something really, really cool and you wanted to share it with friends or whatever. Um, I think it used a program called Pi Installer, but looking at it and a couple comments I saw on it said that, um, yeah, you can do that, but you're going to end with end up with gigabyte size files because basically you're installing Python onto that or some type of Python running machine, you know, this is a interpreted machine, so it runs it as it goes. And uh, they were talking about gigabyte size files. So I said, well, I'm going to close that door too. I'm not going down that road either. So um, uh, it seemed to be another way, especially with the Pi, that we could do it. And uh, I uh, spent half a day looking at, looking at all the options and bunch of roads roadblocks along the way but i finally got to work and i figured well i even uh i decided to make a uh uh <laughs> a text document for myself in there because i'll never remember this next time i want to do it so i figured i'd share it with you all as well so uh, let's see if we can get to it so i'm gonna use my vnc to get to my pie let me move myself out of the way. Maybe down here will be out of the way. So anyhow, this is the how and and actually this will only work if you got like a one that uses the a program that uses your console or something like that. You're just not going to be able to do it. So this is for a uh, the I use that Pi Simple GUI and this is any GUI based thing where you're going to have a. Uh, you know, a graphical interface, it'll work with that, but um, you're probably not going to need it if you're counting on entering stuff into your console. You could still open it up possibly, but I don't know how, I don't know how that would work. So this is, this, these instructions are based on having a GUI type .py file. So First thing you need to do is be, to make it executable, you have to put this line of code at the very top of your, your um, .py file. So just bring that up. So I just added this line of code 
That's all I did. It's like a comment, but I guess it's readable by the interpreter to whatever it goes to the looks for user bin Python three or whatever. I guess when you click it, it automatically says, oh, it's a Python. So I'm going to run the Python interpreter or something on there. But anyhow, that, that's what seemed to work for me. There was other things that had just Python and without the three, but for the Raspberry Pi, I think you need that three in there. So got that taken care of. That's the first one. That was fairly easy. Like I said, it's six steps here, but um, they're fairly not too bad. So the next thing they I found out you had to do is you have to give it uh, executable permissions. And so we had to go to the uh, terminal window to do that. So I navigated to the, I have my uh, Python 3, my Python files and documents slash Python 3 on my uh, Raspberry Pi. And uh, as you can see, I went through and changed directories down to it. I'm still, I had to go back and, get cheat sheets on how to remember to do all this but uh and anyhow i found it and my file is called the speed of sound dot py you can see i tried the speed of sound dot pyw but it just thought it was a text file a unknown text file and it didn't do anything with it so that must be just a windows thing or something that pyw or else i'm not doing something right so I found, like I say, this is a different way of doing it. So anyhow, down here, you do this, uh, you have to do the sudo and then chmod, and then you the plus x makes it executable, then the name of your file .py. So that's what I did. And um, like I said, that worked out. Then I tried to run the file by just putting the speed of sound .py. I'm not really sure because you seem like you're in the correct directory, but it must have something to do with this line that we put up here or something. So I did see that somebody on one of the forums said, oh, you got to put the a dot and a slash first and then that, and then it'll run. And uh, it actually ran when I did that. And I can actually show you that by just doing the first two steps, we can actually get it to run without having it open uh, the Visual Code Studio or whatever editor you're using. Uh, I think is what is it? Control P to redo that and then hit enter. It takes a few seconds and then it brings up your program. So that's kind of cool. So. Like I said, I do have uh, VSC open up here, but uh, uh, it's not being used for this at all. It's just your Python interpreter itself taking care of it. All right, so we got that far. Um, like I said, I have it up here. I didn't actually tell you to. Yeah, I did. And then to test it, you go to your dot slash py. And I'll probably put this, uh, these in my uh, description of my video in case somebody wants to copy and paste it without having to type it all out again, if you want to try it. And um, let's see. So, yeah, I tested it and it brings up your window. All right. So now we have it on that. So now I like I say I my goal is to get it to be an icon like the Arduino icon here or something, and run it in that way. So um, uh, we'll go to this next one. So you can make a entry in here by going to preferences and then main menu editor. I should bring that up. And then you want to add new item. Let's bring this over so maybe we can read our thing. Sometime. Okay, so new item. And then we have to give it a name. I had this all done and I backed all out of it. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to call it speed. Sound. 
All right. And now the command is the actual Python file that you want to run, but you can only run it after you've made it executable, but we've already done all that. So we want to browse to it. And right now I'm on recent, so it's probably going to be one of these pretty close here. Yeah, so my recent document was this one. So I'm going to hit OK. All right. And you don't have to fill out this, and we don't want the terminal to launch. I guess if you wanted to work with your terminal, if you had something that was working in the terminal, I guess you could put here and it would bring up a terminal without the code window itself. I don't know. I Just an option I, to try if you want to try it without a GUI one. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, don't need a comment. So I'm going to hit OK. All right. And uh, you can see that it added it down here. Let me move this over again. So it brought it down here. You can notice it doesn't have an icon with it right now. Just going to give a generic one. So, okay. And now, like I said, it's not here yet, but it is in our drop down. So we have a speed of sound lab, right? So. We went through these steps here. An item should be in our drop down. And then let's test it to make sure it works. All right. It's still working good. Uh, we're going to exit out of it. All right. So that gets us in our drop down. So now if we want to put it into um, this one, you right click on the item in the window and then select add to desktop. All right. That's going to take care of that. So right click add to desktop. And there it is. All right. Now, if you want to change this icon, I don't think I got all that in there, but. If you right click on this in properties, hmm, looks like I skipped that maybe. Right skip, right click in properties. And then all you have to do if you want to add your own icon, first you got to go on the internet and find one. I went and found one. And here it's all the system icons. You could choose something from them if, from there if you wanted to. But I ended up just finding a, a just like a some type of sound. Yeah, it looks like this, just a, like a speaker with sound. I wasn't very creative, but that's what I got. So now it's going to be that. And then you hit OK and it changes it to that. So now we have a speed of sound lab up here. And all we have to do is click on it once. And wait, and we should have it come up. There we go. Click out of that. All right. So I got that takes us down to here. Like I said, I did leave out that you uh, right click on that. Well, right click on item, add to desktop. I have to add an extra one in there about right clicking on icon to change the symbol. Okay, gotcha. All right, so we got that done. <laughs> I'm trying to make a mental note. Okay, so this last thing came up for me and I had to go fix it. And I'm just gonna show you what it is. Um, maybe I can show you in a long way. But when you clicked on, it was funny, when you clicked on the item on the drop down, it didn't give this, but after I created a, a, a shortcut on the uh, desktop, I got this uh, uh, message come up, ask if you did want to, what you want to do with this executable file. So I had to look around on the internet again, and I had to find out what to do with it. But basically what you got to do is you got to go into your uh, file manager or whatever they call it here. And you go to, let's see, what is it? File, edit, edit, then preferences. 
And where this line down here, where it says, don't ask options on launch executable file. So maybe I'll unclick it and see if I can get the file to come up. I don't know if it will or not. So, okay, so I'll unclick it and I'm gonna close. Minimize that. Okay, so now what happens if I click on this? Okay, yeah, so this is what comes up. If you see this come up, that's what you need to do. You need to go into your file manager and unclick that. Um, this still works, but then you have to hit execute to do it, or you pick one of the other options and it might bring it up in the other thing in your uh, editor or whatever. But this is, that's what we had to do. So let me go see if I can go fix this again. All right, so I go to edit preferences and I want to click on this don't launch don't ask option on launch executable so I'll close that and I will close this now I'll click on this and then we're back to opening up without it anyhow that's my solution for uh, being able to open up an application uh, on your Raspberry Pi without going through your editor and hit and run and all that stuff. So hope this helps somebody that, like I say, it only really seems to work. I mean, only useful if you're using a graphical unit user interface or something. And also, like I said, you can't like forward this file to somebody else they have to have the Python and all the libraries that you've uh, pip installed on your, you know, on their machine as well. Um, so it's, you know, this isn't like, okay, oh, I got this cool program. I'm going to sell it. It's not going to work that way. But remember, I'm, you know, this is all on your Raspberry Pi. So you could, once it's on that Raspberry Pi, you could, you know, go ahead and uh, give that Raspberry Pi to, you know, your little box here. You can hook that up to a monitor and a keyboard and um, they'd have it, you know, they could fire it up and run it wherever they take it. So it's like a all-in-one unit. It's not like something that you can transfer. So like a piece of equipment rather than the application that you can transfer from computer to computer real easy. Anyhow, that's what I got today. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.